All right, so I'm going to keep it kind of simple uh, with the genetics on this video. Uh, and then I, I want to get a whiteboard so I can kind of go more in depth um, with the genetics. But for this week, for this video, um, I'll talk about incomplete dominant genes bred to a normal. And then I'll talk about a recessive gene bred to a normal. And then I'll talk about polygenic traits a little bit. So with incomplete dominant genes, you got hypo, motley, jungle, Celtic, arabesque, Key West, labyrinth, um, Inca. There, there's, there's quite a few um, genetics that are incomplete dominant. Um, so if, if you have a bullet and you're not sure if that genetic is incomplete dominant, you can comment on this video, hit me up on Facebook, Instagram, um, or even Google can uh, you know answer that question on whether or not that gene that you have is uh, in fact incomplete dominant. So I just want to keep this real simple for somebody maybe brand new uh, to the hobby. Let's say if you got a hypo. You have a hypo male boa, and you want to breed it to a normal female. So, 50% of those babies will be hypo. The other 50% of those babies will be normal. So, if you have a hypo, a hypo boa essentially has one copy of the hypo gene and one copy of the normal gene. Okay? So, it's either... To each baby, it's either going to pass on the normal gene or the hypo gene. Okay, so just from the dad alone, he's making half of the babies are normal and half of the babies are hypo. You're, you're breeding it to a normal, so the other side of the pairing can only pass on the normal gene. So therefore, half of your babies will be hypo from the father, the other half will be normal. Uh, and all the hypo babies will have one copy of the hypo gene and one copy of the normal gene, visually, how they visually express it. So uh, that's how incomplete dominant genes work. You can, you know, factor that in with, you know, Motley, Jungle, Celtic, Arabesque, Key West. It's all going to work the same way. If you have a Key West boa and you breed it to a normal, half of the babies will be Key West half of the babies will be normal. It's not going to be perfectly 50% uh, every time. Let's say if you have 20 babies, you might get 9 Key West and 11 normals. It's never going to be perfect, but on average, it's about 50%. Now we'll jump into a uh, recessive gene. So let's look at uh, albino. Wh whatever line of albino you can think of, uh, you can enter that in there. If you breed an albino boa to a normal boa, you will not make visual albino boas. You will make het for albino boas. So the, the, the albino boa has two copies of the, the gene, the albino gene. So it's passing on the albino gene to each baby. It can't, it can't pass on a normal gene. It's just the albino gene, okay? And it's breeding to a normal, so that, that bow is passing on the normal gene okay, to, to every baby. So each baby has a copy of normal or wild type, and each baby has a copy of the albino gene. So since it only has one copy of the albino gene, it's het for albino. It looks like a normal, but it carries the albino gene. Uh, so later on... If you breed something else to it that carries the albino gene, now you can make uh, visual albinos. And you can factor in anery, leopard, blood, um, you know, any of the albinos, any of the anneries, uh, any of the recessive genes, just factor that in there, it's gonna work the same way. Uh, and then late in other videos, we'll go more in depth on, on different pairings and how they work. So let's talk about polygenic uh, traits or, you know, lines. So if you have pastel dream, for example, if you breed 
a pastel dream animal, first of all, to have a pastel dream animal, it has to look pastel. It has to have a reduction in black, which in turn usually brings in more creams and more color. If you compare a pastel boa to a normal wild type boa, you can see distinct differences. So, so long as that pastel boa that you, you have is actually pastel, if you breed that to a normal, basically what you're doing is you're diluting the pastel. So, let, look at it this way. It's like a whole bunch of little genes together and there's, there's no real order on how they disperse when, when you breed it. You can't really predict, you know, what you're going to get. There's no percentages on, you know, the 50% of them are going to be pastel. That, that's not how it works. Uh, so if, if you breed a real high quality pastel boa, any pastel boa, to a normal, you might, if it's a really high quality, you might get all the babies in the litter might be decent pastels. Pretty good. Uh, or you could also get, you know, less than that you might you might not get as many as you think but once those babies start to develop and, and even right there when the litter is born you can see you know the pastel influence um, on those babies okay so obviously the ones that you see the reduction in, in black the creamy color uh, more more reds coming in or oranges like the orange gasm pastel obviously you're gonna label those as pastel. The other ones that don't really look pastel, you don't call them pastel dream. You, you can label them this way and say, well, I'm not gonna tell you what to do, but this would be the right way to do it. Pastel dream line animal, so that way whoever's buying that knows what line uh, that bow is from. So if they have other pastel breeding stock, they can, you know, plug that in there and, and probably increase their chances of getting, you know, some nicer um, pastels because you know that there's, you know, some pastel genetics in there floating around. We don't know how, how they disperse, but they're in there. Um, so, basically what you want to do with polygenic traits is you want to enhance them uh, you you got to outcross and, and maybe breed it to something else that is not pastel so you can strengthen your, your bloodlines. Um, but essentially you want to breed a pastel to another pastel to in, increase the quality uh, of your pastel. And then further on down the road, I mean, Richard Cineceros uh, with his RC pastels, I know this past season he bred an RC pastel to an RC pastel. And there's no doubt every single baby is a high quality uh, pastel in that litter. So if you put the work in, um, you can get it to that point. But the more you you don't follow, you know, follow the steps or follow your path to increasing the quality, you know, the less likely you're going to get to that point. You might just kind of uh, dilute that pastel trait over time or you know, you'll see you'll see boas labeled as pastel, and they're not they're not pastel. Um, they might be from that line, but they're not actually uh, pastel. So polygenics can be a little more tricky. It's a little more time. Um, you know, it's like it's not a race. It's more like just putting you know having an eye to pick out your holdbacks and the the really high quality, and then over generations is when it really starts to uh, kick off. Um, so it's not gonna come as quick as just breeding a hypo to a normal, you, you know, it's it's more long-term and you gotta invest in really nice animals um, in the beginning. So for me, pastel and polygenic traits are where it's at. You know, that's what I have the most fun with uh, right now. Uh, I'll take a really nice pastel boa over any morph that, that's out there. Um, right now so pastel dream is my thing I'm adding a few more lines of pastel this year as well so 
Let me know in the comments if you guys have any pastels. Um, and then also if, if you learned anything from this uh, genetic breakdown um, that I did. Very rookie uh, genetic breakdown. But anyways, if it helps somebody, you know, let me know. I appreciate you guys. Um, and I'll see you next week.